Hi friend, most of those who listen to my stories are not subscribed to the channel. As such, please take a few seconds of your time to subscribe and also turn on your notifications so you never miss a new story. Your support is very valuable to me. Thank you so much. And now a new story. Hannah, I don't even want to hear anything. Kids, are you kidding me? That wasn't the deal. I am only 19. Ronald, I did undo it on purpose. What am I supposed to do now? Didn't do it on purpose? Ronald looked at Hannah. Well, who knows? Quite possible. She is from an ordinary, even poor family. It was the opposite for Ronald. His parents were very rich and powerful. Ronald, why are you looking at me like that? Do you think I tricked you? Yes, Hannah. That's exactly what I think. What kind of crazy person would get pregnant at 18? Or, very cunning. The only thing I can do for you is give you money. I hope you can solve your problems on your own from here on. He took the money out of his wallet and tossed it in her lap. Here, that should be enough. And don't you dare blackmail my parents. He left, and Hannah remained sitting all alone on the bench. Ronald couldn't forget the expression in her eyes for a long time. He even wanted to find her somehow, to ask her how she lived and how things were going. But then, his father sent him abroad to study, and Ronald was gradually able to pull her out of his mind. Many years had passed since then. Ronald was the head of a big company. He was thinking about an upcoming reunion meeting with some friends from his youth. He called his secretary to see if he had any important meetings tomorrow morning. Rose, what's on the schedule for tomorrow? Is the whole day scheduled? Nothing really important, Mr. Ronald. Just as usual. Can you cancel all my appointments before lunch? Rose opened her notebook. Okay. The morning briefing can be moved to the next day. I'll move the meeting with the head of logistics to 4 p.m. You'll be free until 2 p.m. Is that enough? Yes, Rose. I have no idea what I'd do without you. The young woman smiled. Then you would find a new assistant. No. There are no people like you. But that's not all. I don't know how to say it anyway. Tonight, I have a meeting with some old friends at the restaurant. We hadn't seen each other in a very long time, so we decided to hang out. And to change, I have to go home, and I'd really rather not. Could you prepare a suit for me to wear tonight? Ronald said uncertainly. Is Mrs. Audrey in a bad mood? Ronald sighed in relief. Right. See, Rose, and you say you can be replaced. It's just that Mrs. Audrey called today. She looked in her notebook. 27 times. I would strongly advise you to call her back. Otherwise, she will come here, and then the party with your friends will be ruined. Ronald sighed heavily. Yes, Rose, you're right as always. I'll call her now. Okay, in the meantime, I'll take care of your suit. What restaurant are you going to, and how fancy do you need to look? This is the best restaurant, and I need to look perfect. I told you, friends from a long time ago. We haven't seen each other for ages. Rose nodded and left. Ronald looked after her. Yes, he was very lucky. Naturally, his wife was furious, telling him to fire Rose, as well as the other young assistants. But this time, he did not listen to her. In fact, at first, he did look at Rose as a pretty young girl. He's a boss who doesn't mind having an affair. But Rose immediately let him know that she was not that kind of lady, and she was not interested in such affairs. As soon as she realized what he wanted from her, she came to his office herself. Mr. Ronald, I need to talk to you. He looked at her curiously. I'm listening to you, Rose. I'm well aware that in your circles, it's probably common for the boss to have affairs with assistants. But I came here to work. So you have time to think about what's more important to you. A good assistant or another mistress. He raised his eyebrow in surprise. Do you consider yourself a good assistant? Rose didn't take her eyes off him. Yes, I'm sure I'm the best assistant you've ever had. And for some reason, Ronald believed her. Since that day, he has never regretted it. Rose was perfect, 
She remembered everything, she knew everything, and she always had everything in order. Gradually, Ronald dropped a bunch of his responsibilities on her, and he finally felt like a real boss. He could even get drunk with Rose and have a heart-to-heart -heart talk without fear that someone else would find out something about the conversation. Rose was 26, never married, graduated from a good university. Ronald always asked her, why did you come to work as an assistant? After all, education allows you to make a good career. And she would answer with a smile. You can climb quickly, but without experience, you can fall even faster. I'll gain experience, then decide what to do next. Ronald didn't want to think that the day would ever come when Rose decided to quit. Ronald came back to reality. He took the phone to call his wife and listened to Audrey's crazy yelling again. Why? Why does he live with her? Ronald didn't understand it himself. For a long time, there was nothing to tie them together except their quarrels. No intimacy, neither mental nor physical. It just so happened that it was convenient for them to get married. And to be even more precise, it was already time to choose a wife and get married. And Audrey, who was head over heels in love with him and also had a good dowry in the form of a small furniture factory, was a good option. After living together for 10 years, Audrey decided that now she could do whatever she wanted and she began to eat cakes and candy and all sorts of other sweets with great appetite, which caused her to gain a lot of weight. Audrey stopped taking care of herself and looked overweight, so she didn't cause any manly cravings in Ronald. Actually, it was the reason for all the quarrels. Audrey was terribly jealous of him, annoying him with her calls, and he could not leave her because he knew that she would be lost without him and absolutely no one will need her. And what was the point of leaving her? It's not the right age to be fluttering around like a butterfly. He was 46 years old and Audrey was two years older. Hello Ronald, why aren't you picking up the phone? Audrey, you know damn well that I'm at work. I have meetings and briefings all the time. I mean, what could be so important that you would call me 27 times? That's what you have become? Maybe I'm being killed or raped and you're not picking up the phone. Ronald sighed heavily. Audrey, call 911. Are you done? No. His wife yelled so much that he even took the phone away from his ear. You have to come home early today. I invited my friends today. Can you be at home at least once? Oh no. Spare me from hanging out with your empty-headed friends. Thanks for telling me. I'll spend the night at the office. Have a good time, darling. He hung up the phone without listening to the shouting on the other end and rubbed his hands in relaxation. He'd rather sleep on the couch at the office than at home. Tonight though, maybe he'd go anywhere else. After all, meeting two friends from his youth was a good fortune. Not that they were the best of friends, but they communicated very tightly many years ago. Then the guys moved away and their paths parted. And yesterday, they met accidentally at an event, barely recognized each other, and now they scheduled a meeting. Interesting to see who's doing what, to compete in business, to show off. Ronald was sure he had reached the coolest heights. The phone rang on the table. Ronald winced. He thought it was his wife calling again. But no, it was Eric's number, one of the friends he was going to meet today. Hello Ronald, here's the thing. Need to cancel a meeting? Ronald was disappointed. No. It's just that we won't be by ourselves. Bring someone too. The wife? Ronald sighed dolefully. The other end of the line laughed. Come on, are you out of your mind? What wives? Why should stay home? Ronald laughed. I got it. I will bring someone. He had just hung up the phone when there was a knock at the door. Come in. Rose came in. She brought a new suit and a shirt. Here, I think it will be perfect. Rose, could you do me one more favor? Of course, it'll be well paid. I'm listening. Look, everyone's coming to the meeting tonight with their mistresses. I mean, it's not even a meeting. It's a show of who's got what. Could you... 
play the part of your date? Rose tactfully substituted the word. Yes, that's right. All right, Ronald, but if it's okay, I'll get there myself. All right, if it's more convenient for you. Assyria Restaurant, 7 p.m. Rose looked at him strangely, then nodded. I'll be there. Well, go get ready then. See you tonight. The meeting was absolutely fantastic. They hugged each other for a long time, happily greeting each other. Ronald took a closer look at the dates of his friends. Yes, they were beautiful, but nothing more. Completely blank stares, pumped lips, and very appetizing forms. Are you alone? The friends asked. No, Rose is on her way up. Guys, look at this princess. Eric looked somewhere in the hall. Ronald followed his gaze and smiled. It was as if Rose had truly appeared from the last century. If it were not for the modern long dress, which by the way barely had anything but emphasized it, they could look for a time machine. Ronald stepped forward and kissed her hand. He could see that his friends were stunned. Their ladies were nowhere near as beautiful as Rose. Everyone was having fun. The girl's friends were wriggling on the dance floor, trying to get some attention. Eric sighed. Ronald, I think you've always been unfairly lucky. Ronald smiled. Rose went to the ladies' room and they could talk about the ladies. But it's not luck. It's my personal charisma and charm. He's got charisma. Eric laughed. Tell us, where did you find such a beauty? Well, there are definitely no more girls like Rose out there. Victor, the other friend, asked. Ronald, I wanted to ask you, do you remember that Hannah you used to go out with? Where is she now? Ronald got an unpleasant tingle. I have no idea. I haven't seen her since those years. Victor sighed. Neither have I. A lot of guys liked Hannah, and she chose you. Rose was back at the table, and the attention of them all immediately shifted to her. Ronald poured wine for everyone and said it was time for a drink. He always did that when he thought of Hannah. The chef's dish was brought to them when everyone was already a bit drunk. Everyone except Rose. She had only one glass of wine during the entire night, and Ronald was simply fascinated by her. Victor jokingly began the conversation with Rose. Rose, I'll get a divorce, but please marry me. Eric interrupted him. Rose, don't believe him. I'll get a divorce first. Marry me. Rose smiled and teased them. There was silence at the table for a while. All the attention was taken up by the chef's meal. Finally, Ronald said, Guys, this is divine. Eric sighed. I completely agree with you about that. Ronald raised his hand, calling for the waiter. Buddy, please bring in the chef. Is something wrong? On the contrary, everything is amazing. I want to thank him separately. Ronald placed his wallet on the table. The waiter smiled and immediately disappeared. Five minutes passed and the chef came to the table. The chef turned out to be a woman. Did you ask to see me? Ronald jumped up, looked at her and froze. Everything around them went quiet. Hannah! She looked at him silently. Victor jumped up. Hannah, darling, we're all so happy to see you. We called you here to thank you for the meal. Damn, I'm confused. The whole time Hannah was looking at Ronald, and he was looking at her, as if all these years had never happened. The pause dragged on. Ronald didn't know what to do. Should he give her money as a chef, or fall to his knees as with Hannah? She almost didn't change, only a bit skinnier, and as if she were taller. He stood there like a confused dummy, and Hannah suddenly looked at Rose. Rose, I think that's enough. You've looked at him. You've gotten to know him. We can end this farce. I'll wait for you in the kitchen. Hannah left them without saying anything else. Rose stood up. Please forgive me. Mom can be very tough when it comes to family affairs. Goodbye, Victor. Goodbye, Eric. Rose turned to Ronald. Goodbye, Daddy. I hope to never see you again. Ronald slumped in his chair with a crash. Eric turned to Victor. I don't get it. Did she call Ronald her daddy? Victor glared angrily at Ronald. So it wasn't a rumor that you broke up with Hannah when she was pregnant? 
Ronald was silent. Victor stood up. You know, Ronald, even though your business is more successful, as a human being, you lose to everyone. Let's go, Eric. Girls, come on, we're leaving. Everyone left and Ronald couldn't move. Not only were the memories flooding back to him, but now he found out he had a daughter, a smart, beautiful girl with whom he wanted to have an affair. Audrey didn't give birth to children and he didn't care because he just didn't want any children from her. And that's what happened. This is different. What's different though? Rose won't communicate with him and Hannah won't either. And he won't even try. He knows for sure they'll both drive him away. He raised his tired eyes and shuddered. Audrey was walking toward him across the hall. The look on her face didn't bode well. She must have checked on his sleep at the office. He took a glass, poured cognac to the brim, and drank it right in front of Audrey. She was confused by the insolence. Well, Ronald, now you're in trouble. He just closed his eyes and tried to disconnect from that annoying, loud voice.